Good morning, Jill here with Hillbilly Jilly's Garden, canning, recipes, cooking, a little bit of everything. It is hatch green chili time here in Texas. Now let me explain to you what that means. Uh, these are hatch green chilies because they come from uh, Hatch, New Mexico. Um, this is a great time of the year for these babies because we're going to roast them and we're going to use them in our recipes all year long. Uh, these are also named Anaheim peppers, which you will find in your supermarket. But uh, we have a supermarket here in Texas called Central Market, and every year they run a Hatch Green Chili Fest, and it's a about a two-week event, and uh, that's when people go and get their Hatch Green Chilies. They go and get Hatch Green Chili Cheese, Hatch Green Chili Chips, Hatch Green Chili Salsa, Hatch Green Chili Queso, Hatch Green Chili Twice Baked Potatoes. Uh, you can put these things in anything, but it is a big event here and it's something that we enjoy doing. Um, I learned how to roast hatch green chilies from a former coworker and friend uh, several years back. Uh, she is from El Paso and her family is from El Paso and this is a generation or a generational recipe that goes back a long time. Uh, on picking your hatch green chilies, you wanna try to make sure and get uh, the thin ones, the flat ones, because um, if they're curled, they might not roast as well. I mean, you can still use them but uh, they won't roast as evenly as, you, as the flat ones will. So right now we're soaking them in water and we're getting them cleaned off. They still did have some of that New Mexico sand on them. So we're gonna let them soak and clean up a little bit and we're gonna show you how to roast these and freeze them for your year long uh, recipes. We've let them soak a little bit to get them cleaned off. And uh, one thing I wanna point out to you, be sure and keep the bags that you get them in because these are the bags you're gonna use uh, to steam your green chilies that's going to help you peel them once you get them out of the oven. Um, you want to put your broiler on high and I moved my rack up to the third rung closest to the top and uh, we're going to start to roasting. Here is our first batch of hatch. <laughs> we're going to get ready to put these in the oven. Remember we have our broiler on high. Um, this is my special hatch green chili pan that I use every year. So let me show you where we go from here. You can see them in there starting to bubble up and starting to roast a little bit on the top. We had to turn on our fan because our house is already smelling like green chilies, but it's a refreshing, great smell. Okay, you can see the front side of them. They're all roasted, so we're gonna turn them so we can get the other side. Use tongs, because they are hot. Um, try to get the stems off if you can, because that's what caused the smoking, the smoke, uh, your oven to smoke, excuse me. Sometimes I can get them off, sometimes I can't. So we're gonna turn them. It didn't take very long in the oven to roast the top side, so be sure and watch them. Don't walk away and let them go. So now we're gonna put these back in and roast the other side. We're gonna put a little bit of water in these bags that I told you to save that your green chilies came in and then we're gonna empty it out. We want enough, enough moisture in the bag so that uh, when I take the green chilies out of the oven, I'm gonna put these in here and then I'm gonna uh, twist it up and that's how they're gonna steam. They are roasting away in there. Look at them babies. Okay, we got the back sides roasted. Now we're gonna put them in our bag that we put a little bit of, of water in and emptied out, and this is what's gonna cause them to steam. These will steam probably about 10 minutes, and the reason why we roast them is so you can get the skin off uh, very easily, and also it gives them a good flavor. And uh, we're gonna freeze these for our Tex-Mex dishes throughout the year. So uh, while these are steaming, I'm going to show you. We're going to do like a little assembly line here. See how I have those all in there? I'm going to seal them up a bit and I'm going to set them in the sink. We have our second batch getting ready to go in. We have our other batch in the sink steaming. So we're going to run this sort of like an assembly line. While these are cooking, those are steaming and we'll just pile them up. Now comes the peeling time. Um, this is my first batch. It's been sitting in its bag for about 10 minutes steaming, which is going to make it easier for me to peel. Um, I wear gloves because I'm a weenie and uh, these things get a little hot and I know I'll touch my face or something but uh, my friend who taught me this recipe doesn't. Uh, she's done this for many, many years. So it helps to add a little bit of cold water to it and see, you can see the skin just coming completely off. We want to be sure and get all the seeds out as well because that's what makes it hot. And we like a mild flavor.
just comes right to pieces. So we're going to set these out and get ready to put in our, you can see they skinned up really nice. Let me get you another one. We're on our second one. See the skin is just peeling right off here. So we're going to get all these skinned and all of them uh, de-seeded and then I'm going to show you what we do when we, as we freeze them. We have our first batch peeled and laid up. We've got our last batch in the oven. I've got two more batches in here that are still steaming. That last batch will go in that uh, first bag that these came from. And we're going to show you how to separate them and uh, freeze them. This is my last batch that I roasted. I want to point out that it's uh, very important that you get a good roast on them. If you do not get a good roast, they will not peel as easily. There you go. We got them all skinned. We got them all lined up. Here are all the skins and the seeds in the sink. And now we're gonna show you how to freeze them. It's important that you know you should freeze them in size bags that you think you'll use them in. Uh, we're gonna put them in little sandwich bags and then we'll put all the little sandwich bags in the big freezer bag for double protection because we will use these for the incoming year. Okay, we have them all here. We're gonna uh, be real careful to put them in serving sizes that we think we'll use. A Couple more recipes you might wanna consider is putting these in your scrambled eggs and put some cheese in there. Some sausage, scrambled eggs, roll them up. And freeze them in your freezer and some tortillas and you'll have uh, breakfast burritos for the week. So this is how we try to keep the air out. We'll set these aside. Let me do one more here. These will last all year in your freezer, if not longer. I'm telling you, if once you start this, if you just do it one year, it will become a family tradition where you'll look forward to the harvesting of the uh, hatch green chilies every year where you'll get ready and roast these and freeze them for the incoming year for all your soups, for your queso, for your salsas, for your scrambled eggs, <clears throat> anything. Thank you for watching on our green chili adventure. Uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe to our channel. We do have a lot more uh, special things coming up. It's going to be our football food. So look forward to showing you some good snacks for football season and game day. Take care and God bless.